It took 10 lives, 6 years, and $17 billion to build ultimate structure number 3. It's one of the most challenging transportation systems ever built. The world's longest undersea tunnel stretches 24 miles beneath the ocean floor and unites Europe and Great Britain, two land masses separated for 8,000 years. For centuries, engineers have dreamt of ways to link Great Britain with the European continent. Ideas have ranged from bridges to futuristic tunnels. Aside from the engineering difficulties, the British feared that any link to the continent could bring invasions and disease. But in the 1980s, Great Britain and France at last agreed on a plan to join the two countries. Linking Calais, France to Folkestone, England, the planned tunnel would stretch 24 miles under the English Channel. The scale of it is just stupefying. If you think of it as building 355 story buildings and then taking them and not only burying them underground but burying them underwater and then arranging to have a uh, subway run through the uh, resulting tunnel, you get some idea of the complexity. The English Channel Tunnel is basically two tunnels. There are two running tunnels that run side by side. Between them, there's a smaller tunnel that's the service tunnel and that's for ferrying crews out to the middle in case of an accident, that's the escape route. In 1987, British and French teams started digging towards each other, but difficult months lay ahead. To build the tunnel, workers had to follow a narrow layer of rock called chalk marl, soft enough for the equipment to cut through and sufficiently waterproof to avoid disaster. It's because they had to follow that single level of good digging ground that they went in some places to about 80 feet and uh, sometimes as deep as 150 feet to the seabed. Giant boring machines were specially designed to cut across the channel. They're monster machines. The smallest one that they used to do the uh, service tunnel was as long as two football fields and weighed 650 tons. And that was the little one. The bigger ones were considerably larger. The resulting debris fell onto a conveyor belt and was then carried out of the tunnel. Meanwhile, cranes connected to the giant tunnel boring machines positioned the concrete wedges that formed the tunnel wall. But leaks on both sides constantly challenged the crews and caused delays. Because of the size of this project and the duration, the fact that it was going on for years, uh, they were crushed by this, by this behemoth. For three years, the determined British and French teams dug towards each other. And by 1990, it was finally time for the first tunnel breakthrough. Everybody had been very confident that the machines were going to link up until about 24 hours before the link up was supposed to take place. And then these people began to worry, well, what if we don't meet up? And uh, so when the link up finally came, there was a great, great sigh of relief. When the three tunnels were complete, over 60 miles of track were laid down for the trains that would shuttle under the channel. By 1993, one of the 20th century's most impressive engineering achievements was finally ready to open. The French were very, uh, very happy when the tunnel opened. Uh, the, to them, it's, it's a great public work. I think the only reservation they ever had about it was that the fact that it was a tunnel and you couldn't see it. It's hidden beneath the channel, but its impact is visible to all. 
Britain is much more strongly linked, I think, to the, uh, to the fate of Europe then. I think that the tunnel is one of the great projects of our time, or perhaps any other time. Which is why the channel